tax rate increase over the current rate. Um, and there's a couple things that would help us to get to that, how we can say that, right? We don't issue the entire $340 million to us. We only issue it in what we call series. Um, so we look at the projects that we have proposed and when we would start the design work for those and, and when construction would start and when we think that project would end. Um, and so because we can do that, we are um, looking at conservative estimates for property tax value growth. And also there is other debt that we already have on the books, old bonds that we are paying off over the, the upcoming years. So those two together, right, we're gonna stop payments. I think I have one actually that um, goes off the books here in May will be our last payment in May of 24. So it's retiring some of that old debt and then uh, conservative growth of taxable values that allow us to say that we don't expect a tax rate increase. Okay, so good. So expecting continual increase of property values, even though wasn't it like last year was like a high, like a huge high? I'm just saying, like property tax values, property values were pretty high last year. Are you just, are you just going on, I mean, what's that estimate based on? Because I think nationwide we're kind of in a bubble. I'm just making yeah, a little note. Yeah. No, I understand. Um, so when I say conservative, we probably I think we have built in, um, I'd have to look at my original spreadsheet, but it's probably around 2%. We typically keep it down mm -hmm. lower on purpose. Right, but right? you're saying 2% over here, you're planning on that and no decreases. That's what you're kind of banking on. Correct, right? that's correct. Okay, Yeah. I'm just, it is, it does make me nervous. I mean, yeah. there's huge bubbles. We just heard from someone last week who said that their numbers, it's like up I mean, it's not far from here, and they like triple and quadruple their property values, and something's got to give. You know, people can't afford this anymore. There's a lot of talk about more foreclosures coming. They're kind of at a record right now, and still coming. Yeah. And you know, I'm just saying, it makes me nervous to see that. The other, the other thing I would tack onto that, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way. There are people talking about no tax increase, no tax increase, and they're saying it as if it's a fact. And so I feel like the language came off that way. I think it's clear up there you said expected, but people are running with it like it's a given. So I know it's not your fault. I'm just saying that yeah. people are running around and yeah. saying it a lot. So let me come back to your first sure. statement that you made because I think it's an important thing to highlight. And we talked about this the other night as well, right? So, you know, we're going along, let's say this is approved and we're going along and we, you know, we've issued one series and we're getting close to where we think we're ready to issue another series. And all of a sudden something happens to the economy, right? And when did that happen? 2008-ish, around there, and everything decreased. Um, we would pause, this is the same thing I, I told our Board of Education, is they had the same question, right? When we presented this to them and asked them to put this on the ballot, um, they had that same question for us. And what we said we would do is, we would pause. We would not just keep forging ahead and say, hey, we've got this plan, you know, we're gonna we're expected to start Northern High in 2028, and you know, by golly, we're just gonna go ahead and do it. Forget about the property tax values. We would pause our work, and then we would wait um, before we issued that next series and continued on with projects. But if you've already issued all eight and that team comes after year eight, then we're already on the hook for the money. So mm -hmm. then yeah. you have to increase them both. But that's yeah. that has always been like sure. that, right? That's uh, and. Sure. The lifetime of bonds and school yep. districts, that's always been the yep. case. That's always been the chance. Yep. That that's I'm just clarifying yep. because yeah, like I sure. said, the language running around is no tax increase. I mean, yeah. I've talked to people on social and they've said that that's an S. <laughs> it's not a given. Right. And people seem to think yep. it's a given when it's not. So, okay. that's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. So, <laughs> I mean, I heard everything that you all talked about there, but when, again, just, just no tax increase expected. You know, I'm sure I'm not the only one who was a little skeptical of that phrase. Um, are you thinking that perpetually or are you thinking no tax increase expected for the first year or the first, you know, because I need to Are you asking me for the whole 21 years? Yeah. Is that how long the debt's going on? Yes, for? yes, exactly. I mean, because you say you're retiring some debt, um, so I can see something evening out at that point for however long, but then there could be other things. Um, how, how long would you estimate this, this no tax increase expected to continue? At what point should we expect a tax increase? Yeah, no, that's a great question. 
Um, I don't have a crystal ball to know what's going to happen with property tax values eight years down the road, right? So um, our goal has always been, as a school district, to uh, not increase uh, tax rates for our bonds. I mean, that showed in that chart from, you know, we started at 7.9 mills we were levying in 2013 and went down to 6.05. And we had issued series in between there. New bonds were issued in that 10 year period. Um, and it still kept going down. Um, sometimes just little amounts, um, or it stayed flat, right? 2022 and 2023, we're both at 6.05. But, but you were gaining in revenue, I take it, because of property, uh, because of property value increase? Yeah, that was, that was a piece of it. Yeah, I did too, but she hasn't gone yet. So. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. This is the first time I saw your hand, so I apologize. This is I was just curious. So the bond is for, did you say 21 years? Yes. And I was just curious, in historically, how often have you gone out for a bond proposal? This is a long time. Is that what, that's not what we've done historically, right, in Forest Hills? So you're right. So we had, this isn't to say that, um, this $340 million, well, this the bond proposal that will be out there, we won't come back to the community again for 21 years. That isn't what the 21 years language means in on the ballot. The 21 years language on the ballot means when we, if we sell our first series of bond, and let's just say it's $20 million. It's not that, I'm not sure what it is, but let's pretend it's $21 million. Um, we would sell that and the, the debt would be for a 21 year period okay. for that $20 million. So that's what the 20 million um, our history since I've been here, I started in 2013, um, and, and that at that time in November, uh, the community passed a $45 million bond, um, and then we went back out to the community again in 2018, so about five years later for the $130 million. I have to go back to prior to that, 2013, I don't know off the top of my head, of yeah. when was the last time we actually, um, what was our authorization before that? It was probably when we were building all the, the new buildings, like the Fine Arts Center, The last couple of times we had done that, but I don't, I don't know if sure. 2008 we had anything on the ballot sure. then. So I, I don't think we did because we weren't. But five was probably the max. But that, that there was five the last two prior to this group proposal. The mathematics, at least for the last 15 years, checks out. Okay. So every five years for the last 15 years. Okay. So I guess my question then is. Was there a reason to bundle it all in one big bond proposal as opposed to if we've historically done one every five years yeah. to do it as, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I do, I do, and that's a, that's a great question. Um, for us, it was important to put it out there at once so that um, all of the schools would be represented, right? What we did want to do is to say, we're going to request another $100 million, and these are the three schools that we're going to do in this bond. Um, we really want to get authorization um, to be able to do the renovations for all of our instructional spaces at the other buildings like we have started to do. And so that was a piece of that. It was really to get that authorization so that you know, three years down the road, five years down the road, years down the road, we know that we have authorization to sell bonds to be able to continue those renovations. Great question. All right, Stephanie. Sorry. Right. Um, as taxpayers of the Forest Hills community, would we all be considered stakeholders? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just am curious because you do a lot of talking and not just you, but the Board of Education and other administrators do a lot of talking about wanting input and seeking input from the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I feel as though that only means certain groups of people who are sought out by the schools. Um, and I guess my concern is, is there any kind of a guarantee or word from our schools that if we were to vote yes on this proposal, that we as stakeholders would all be heard and and valued 
because I, it's come to my attention recently that a couple stakeholders in the Forest Hills community had tried to have a voice and use the new um, book reconsideration process and they were turned away because they don't have children in the schools, but they are tax paying citizens of the Forest Hills community. Would they not be stakeholders and allowed to have a voice in our schools? I'm not going to speak to the book review. Uh, you know, I'm not asking you to speak to the book review. So, I'm asking you to you speak know, to the stakeholder part yeah, of that. Yeah. Does every stakeholder get a voice in Forest Hills? Depending on, yeah, I mean, depending on what it is. So when we look at the community aquatic center and um, a new aquatic center, I think I've talked about that, right? We want to hear from the folks who are using those spaces on what would they like to see there. But we're all paying Absolutely. for them. So all yeah. of them all of the expenses. So shouldn't we have a voice no matter what, if we're a stakeholder? We might, you know, we might just send something out to everybody. I, I don't know, we haven't talked about what that gathering of that stakeholder input will actually look like okay. for those two particular spaces. Okay. Um, the in learning environments, um, you know, we lean on our instructional experts, right? Our principals and our teachers on what that would look like in those spaces, what they need, what's working instructionally and how teaching and learning has changed and um, what improvements they would like to see. So we're gonna really rely on those spaces for those types of spaces. Um, but the, for those community spaces, then yeah, we'll have to figure out, yeah, we have a predetermined, we're gonna do a survey of everybody or, you know, come on site and we're gonna have a meeting and you're gonna, we haven't done that yet. Okay. Thank you.